I guess I always wanted to do a Keith Jackson imitation, so now would be a good time. A Keith Jackson, he's a dandy. <laughs> Loved it when he says that. I um, knew Bo Schembechler, first time I met him was when I was nine years old. Um, my dad was an assistant coach for him, and I never really thought he was all that tough. As a matter of fact, I thought he was a pretty nice guy back then. <laughs> because one day, his son Shemmy came to play with us, me and my brother and my sister, and uh, he had been there for a couple hours, and we were playing blocks upstairs in my room. And um, Bo came in and yelled up to Shem, and he said, let's go, Shem, time to go. And Shem picked up, walked over the stairs, roared back, and threw about four blocks at Bo. And Bo was ducking to get out of the way. And he said, well, OK, Shem, if you want to stay for another hour, go ahead. <laughs> so I, I always thought he was a pretty nice guy. and then. I got to play for him, and uh, he does kind of criticize you a lot, and um, I, I must have been told that I'd never play down at Michigan about a hundred times. But don't get me wrong, I love playing for him. It was just when I it was time to get drafted by the pros, I was kind of uh, looking forward to a different type of coaching style. They said in the pros that, that it was a little bit more laid back, the coaching styles. and. <laughs> then I got drafted by the Chicago Bears, and. I play for Mike Ditka, and that's like going from the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> so whoever said that Bo Schembechler doesn't prepare his quarterbacks well to play in the pros? I'd like to read you a quote, if I may. And the first time I ever heard this was when I was a freshman at Michigan. And the man said simply this, to me, no coach in America asks a man to make any sacrifice. He requests that he do the opposite. He said, live clean, come clean, think clean. That he stopped doing all the things that destroy him physically, mentally, and morally, and begin doing all the things that make him keener, finer, and more competent. This was said by Fielding H. Yost, who was the head coach for Michigan from 1901 to 1926. And Bo reads this to every one of his squads at the beginning of the season. And I think it reminds us of all that is good in college football and in amateur sports. And I think it's really appropriate that we honor Bo tonight for his outstanding accomplishments on the playing field because he truly deserves to be mentioned with coaching legends such as Woody Hayes, Bear Bryant, Joe Paterno, as one of the greatest college coaches of all time. But I think even more importantly than that, he's been an excellent teacher to his players, a fine representative for the university, and above all, he's been good for the game. And I can say to you, Bo, that it was never a sacrifice to play for you. It was always an honor. And on a personal note, I would just like to wish you continued success to you and Millie and your entire family and much happiness in your career beyond Michigan. Thank you.